Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I want to talk about the JDXA. Some of the things I feel that some people might be looking at it in the wrong manner, and just a general overview of the basics of the machine, because it's kind of overlooked and didn't do that very well in the market. Again, this very much pushes a sound design kind of concept. It does have a recording section internal that you can do some stuff when you get used to it. It is not very complex or deep, very basic. Pushing up to the knobs in this section up here where your parts are and the control of the parts, that is the true powerhouse of this board. I mean, there is just so much power here in terms of sound design and sound control. First of all, the JDXA is a four-part analog, a four-part digital sound design machine. In my opinion, it really um, excels in sound design. I think that's the biggest throw off out the gate. The JDXA definitely with the kind of recording setup thrown up front. People might think it has the same feel as the JDXI, the smaller kind of sibling of this machine but they really do not feel at all the same when you play with them. This has no built-in drum section and it doesn't feel like a groove box. With the JDXI felt like a groove box with a little tiny keyboard. The overall control of this machine, all the knobs up front, I mean, it's obvious. You guys know it's being cut off a little bit because I wanna focus on here on the camera so you guys can kinda see the buttons I'm hitting because I feel that's the part I'm focusing on in this video. But there is tons of control in this board. And the biggest gripe against it, one of the biggest, I would say, hates on this machine, is the fact that there's a menu dive in this really small screen here. And this is correct. I mean, there's one screen here. That's it. But it, once you know this machine and how it works... <laughs> That's really all you need. The menu dive becomes pretty much almost nothing besides like the matrix part of this machine, which everything's a menu dive for that. And the reason why I say this is, okay, if you go into this m machine thinking you have to hit the menu button and then go into that, hit the arrow, 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 enter, 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 like all the menu dive stuff to get into like all the settings that you want 
in I mean you even have to do it in a virus B or anything like that you it's very minimalistic in that sense once you get used to it and um, let me explain that when you hit the menu button in the screen your first set of options is do you want to go to part do you want to go to tone do you want to go to effects do you want to go you know to these different aspects of the machine but the reality is it's all just one big menu in those initial sections that you choose bring you as a shortcut to that section of this big ass menu now another way to get to those sections is just manipulate anything on the board within the section that you want to get to and that section will instantly warp right here for you to control with the menu dive buttons i literally can just turn anything in the effects section that i want to manipulate for so i'll hit that right now i'm going to turn something on i'm going to turn on the effect <laughs> I am now turning through all the effects in the machine by literally hitting one button, hitting one arrow, and enter, and now, and now I'm... have access to all the effects. So, the menu dive in this machine is almost nothing. Almost nothing. Once you get used to it, it's almost nothing can i say that again this men the menu dive in this is almost nothing so if you're sitting here and being like this machine has a menu dive i won't touch it you have never touched it and if you have you have never paid attention to how it works because it's throwing everything that you react with right here for you to manipulate right away so you don't have to go to the menu to find it up in this section, you control which parts are active when you're playing the board and which parts you are controlling when you turn the knobs. Right now, the keyboard is in poly mode for the analog. You know that because this light all the way to the left here is on. Once I turn it off, it enters mono mode and each of the four parts of the analog section become 100% independent. You can stack them any way you want. You can keep them 100% mono and assign them to different MIDI channels. You can stack them in two, three, and have one mono, two and two, two, one and one, any way you want to work it. If you want to stack all four into one big fat mono part, you can do it. You decide how many parts are active right here in which parts you are manipulating with your entire section up here in terms of control with the blue. You can highlight multiple parts and control multiple parts at the same time, meaning you can filter sweep multiple parts at the same time. I have one part here that's going to be stable. I want to take these other two parts, activate them, keep and only control those other two. Kind of the resonance a little high, sorry guys. As you can see, it gave me a steady part that I could play and two parts that I was manipulating. And that's only three analog parts out of eight 
total parts on this machine. And if you go down to the digital section of this machine, it gets pretty interesting. If you notice one of your oscillators goes dark because you only have one in the digital. If you go to your oscillator section in your digital parts, your first options are all virtual analog versions of, you know, subtractive analog synth classic waveforms. You got triangle, sine two square, saw. You have a digital oscillator which unlocks a whole slew of stuff 500 waveforms starting with number one super saw And after Super Saw, you again have 500 waveforms. Let's go through them. It's like wave table synthesis right now. We're scrolling right now through all the waveforms. <laughs> okay, we're at three hundred and ninety seven. Like things that'll be very nice to layer with analog stuff that you know, you can't really do in analog. And pads are just one aspect. And obviously they're digital. They have much more poly than the analog parts, which is awesome. You can play with that aspect, having a lot more poly on some parts and the analog doing other things. All these parts can have different MIDI channels, be split on the keyboard in any way you want. So yeah, okay. So that's nothing I want to say. This is just the basic starting of my video of why I like it. The thing I think that's most overlooked about it, which is obviously the menu aspect of this, and the fact that it's on a small screen, yes it is, but it's, it's really all you need. And we're going to jump deeper into this tomorrow. Stay positive, stay creative, support each other, and peace.